Welcome back to the Man Overboard podcast. I've been thinking of how to introduce like the episode we're doing today and I've just been laughing and not knowing how to introduce it. Been sat here for a good 10 minutes thinking about <laughs> like, how we could word this. So pretty much what we're going to try to do is like go over some of life's like deepest questions, but in a slightly fun way. Like you'll hear what some of the questions are. We're going to try not to make it like super depressing, but also maybe dive into a few different answers for each one. So I wanted to... On this, for this episode 31 of the Man Overboard podcast. Oh, it's 30. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're, 31. Yeah, I didn't, yeah, even, man. Mention the, I didn't yeah. even mention the number. I just like to do it for our own good, because then we <laughs> listen back and go, oh, that was 31. Oh, shit, I actually put it in the title. <laughs> yeah. So to start it off, I wanted to go with your biggest fear in life, which is... A tough question because obviously everyone's, well, most people have got more than one fear, even if people like to pretend like they're not afraid of anything. Mm -hmm. Everyone mm -hmm. has a few things. So when I say like, what's your biggest fear? What's the first thing that pops into your mind? Even if it's not like a mad one. Clowns. Clowns. <laughs> Straight up clowns. I, I just cannot stand clowns. And I think as, as I've grown older, I'm not, I'm not fearful of clowns anymore. Like, I, uh, like watching it or something like that wouldn't freak me out because it's a clown. It would just freak me out because it's a scary movie but clowns in general ever since I was a child have just sat uneasy with me and I've, I've never been able to understand why they were the definition of children's entertainment for so long because they're arguably the most fucking terrifying things in the world the makeup that they put on is absolutely terrifying the hair that they have the big red hair coming out at the sides they're wearing these giant outfits that are loud over the top they're in your face and they're just nightmare material all over and Clowns. Uh, to be fair, clowns. I'm not a fan <laughs> clowns. of clowns, but I'm not particularly afraid of them either. I just don't, it's like, they're just there. But I do know what you mean. Like, I, I don't know if it's just because of films, though, but, like, the way they look now, like, automatically just fills you with a bit of dread mm -hmm. for no particular reason. Like, so let's say, I mean, there was the killer clown pandemic as well, wasn't there? A little, like, 2017 or 18. Did anything actually happen, though? So... That was one of those things where people then, after the fact, put it to be in viral marketing for a movie that was coming out that was clown-based, oh. and people just jumped on it and took it way too far. And I think there was the odd person that committed crimes dressed as a clown, but I think it was just mostly people taking piss and running around. To be fair, that's smart marketing for a movie. It's they good, did that it? recently with that uh, Smile film where they had like people in sports, like stadiums and stuff, just stood there smiling. Or those, they did it for that Megan movie. Was it called Megan? Oh, yeah. And then they had those people with the face masks on that looked like a dancing on like the top of New York, uh, the, the buildings and all that. And it just... I saw that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you ever actually had a negative experience with a clown? Yes. Yes, I have. I have actually. So I went to... Um, Blackpool Tower Circus, right? Okay. okay, and the scariest place in the world. I know. Don't don't worry. I understand that. And, um, and that one, even because of the clowns. We were so, no, it was just in general. <laughs> just we, we, yeah, yeah. we 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 were down towards the front of like the arena bit, and I can't remember what clown it was. I want to say Bozo or Bonzo or Bojo. Not Bojo. That's he is a clown, but <laughs> a different type, a higher level clown, yeah, higher operating. Um, and there was uh, just a clown going around the front before the show kind of thing and just like interacting with the crowd before things kicked off and then he came over to us and he's like oh what's your name and i was like tim and he went ha, ha, tim nice but dim i just started fucking bawling my eyes out just straight up just started crying and then my dad had to take me out and was just like yeah let's get out of here kind nah. of thing so i think it, i think it was i think that in itself does not sound that bad but as like a five to six year old getting insulted by a fully grown man in makeup that you're already terrified of, in your face, like literally like face of going, Tim, nice, but dim kind of thing. It it was just Triggered. too much for me. And I think that's what then set me on the path of right, fuck clowns, they can go to hell. I feel like that was definitely the start of the downfall of your estimation <laughs> yeah. in clowns. Uh, I, think, I think that's what stopped me from progressing my clown career. Because at one point I was into juggling. Well, we're up to episode 31. Yeah, yeah, it's good that. Yeah, good I joke. just kind of insulted myself yeah, as well. Man, well it doesn't matter. I've only ever had like one weird experience with clowns and it was actually like last year. So it wasn't even when I was a kid or old, but I went to, um, there's this thing in Yorkshire just called Yorkshire Scaregrounds where you True. pretty much walk around and there's like people in fucking ghillie suits jumping out the bushes at you. There's clowns walking around, just like really weird characters. You've got to go through haunted buildings and stuff. And we went through this one bit and then we're like stood in a big circle. And there was this clown just going around, like, pretty much insulting people. 
Um, and he chose to insult me saying I look like a B-Tech Harry Kane because I've also got a shit hairline. <laughs> wow. And wow. I was like, I'm I'm, I'm a fully grown adult. I shouldn't be taking this from another fully grown adult just rinsing me in front of loads of people. But it's just the joys of the scaregrounds. You know him. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm not quite that evil. Yeah. I'm trying to think like what my fear would be. I know when I was younger, I always had like a fear of drowning, which is a pretty stunt. I think anyone would be afraid of drowning, but it was driven by, do you remember that Final Destination film where uh, there was like all in a pool and someone dropped a coin and it like went through the, the like air vent or whatever in the pool and jammed it up. And then it started sucking loads of water in and it was sucking people to the bottom of the pool where the vent was and bringing them through. Fuck like me. Like it was, it like over, overdrived it. And um, one time I was at like a swimming baths near me and I found a penny on the side. I, I fucking shit myself. I was like, I gotta go. <laughs> no, gotta like, I'm not doing this. I quite, can't be near I, this. I, I, I was probably pool. like nine as well. I wasn't even that young. But <laughs> That's I, a death I, trap. I was like, not doing this. I'm out of here actually. And mum's like, what's wrong with you? And then... No, I just carried on swimming. (laughs) (laughs) I was fine. I actually survived. But uh, drowning's definitely one of them. And then just like, I don't know, maybe like the standard ones, like ghosts and stuff. I feel like I've got a bit of like health OCD me. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm a bit afraid of just like being ill. Like I'm afraid of just like general illness which is weird as fuck no i know what you mean it's like health anxiety kind of thing. yeah yeah yeah, yeah so yeah, like yeah. when i like if i if i eat something that i think might be a bit dodgy like it fills me with fear like i'm actually afraid to be afraid about being ill do you know what i mean it goes in a big circle yeah, yeah your fear is the fear of the fear it's like <laughs> yeah. i'm anxious about being anxious yeah 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 yeah, yeah, that yeah. Is actually that has happened to me many times well i think i think going back to what you were saying about the final destination movies i think they instilled a shitload of fear into a whole fucking generation anytime tell me anytime you're driving behind a fucking truck with a load of logs on it you're not shitting yourself thinking oh we go this is it this is it we're all yeah. gonna fucking die in this car now or the one where the roller coaster roller coaster one's bad that's fucking terrible mm. the one the one that sticks in my memory is I think it's Final Destination 3. She's in the dentist's office and that blow up fish falls mm. in her mouth and she's passed out and it just she's just there and she's just slowly choking to death on this. Oh, fucking... I don't remember. I was thinking of a laser oh. eye one, I think, where it was getting hotter and That's hotter. A, yeah, laser eye one's another oh. one. And then uh, there's the one where there's a guy just walking past outside and then just that piece of glass just falls and just crushes him just straight. It just, what horrible movies. The thing is, <laughs> fuck me. They took things that could possibly actually happen in real life and just made them into a horror film. There haven't been a new one for a long time. You know though. what it's kind of like? Do you ever played Hitman? Yeah. It's kind of like Hitman the movie. Like yeah. as if he was doing all those kills, you know what I mean? Like you get so many stunt points for doing those kind of kills, wouldn't you? They were actually good little horror films though. They when were. you were young, I feel like if I watched them now, I'd just be like, yeah. I feel like if I watched them now, I'd enjoy them for the entertainment value yeah. of the creative ways they kill people in the same way that like saw movies they're not particularly scary but mm. it's it's kind of interesting to see like the traps that they come up with but even then with i mean saw movies i i used to adore that saw new movies. spiral one was shit though mm-hmm. although there was I am, jigsaw it, before that as well yeah that there? one was, that was all right, right but it just yeah that new spiral one it had chris rock in that really wasn't all that oh dear yeah, yeah. <laughs> unlucky but um there's a new scream coming out in a few weeks as well which i kind of view in the same light as what you're saying with final destination in terms of I don't expect it to actually be a good film, but it'll just be funny how stupid the kills are because well, the last one was actually decent. It's like a, it's basically just a slasher flick, isn't mm. it? It's just go around kill people kind of thing. That's all you need. So we've gone over some of our biggest fears. So I want to switch it up to something a little bit nicer, some okay. uh, just right. to to lighten the mood a little bit. What was in your like when again? I want it to be like your first thought, the best day of your life. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know because I I I knew that like something like this would come up, and it's been something that I've been pondering for a few hours almost because Mm. like when we first started discussing stuff, and I don't know. I what you go first. Go on. Let me let me see what kind of ideas you're going for, and I might be able Mm. to pluck something out of my history. I think there's like when I because I'm not trying to deep it too much as well. I think honestly, one of the first ones that comes to mind is the first day of Leeds Fest this year. Because I kind of felt like it was like it, it was a few. It was my birthday celebration. I'd not done all properly for my birthday, so it was it was my birthday, and I was just with like two of my best mates. Met you, met like a couple of your friends, met a few other friends, and it was just like a beautiful day. First day at the festival, just amazing. Like everything went so well, but I feel like I've got a lot of recency bias towards that one because it was like a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. So 
I'd maybe go with the day I went to WrestleMania. Ooh, because oh, I like that. I was in Texas with my dad, which was absolutely banging. I remember before we went, we went to this mad steakhouse and I had like a 24 round steak at like 15. I had a pack of Marlboro Golds. <laughs> <laughs> I was loving my life. Yeah. And then we went to WrestleMania, which is just an unbelievable experience. Like being in a stadium at the time, I still proper loved wrestling with like 105,000 people that all love the same thing as you. Um, funny enough as well, there was... In my block, like just a bit of seats that was near me, there was three people, including there was me and two other people that had an England flag that had a Leeds United badge on it, which is mad. Like it to be the in chances Texas, of that, yeah. Like yeah, one yeah. of the WWE cameramen come and took a picture of it. I never saw it anywhere, but mm-hmm. he was like, "Yo, that is pretty crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah, I've got to get yeah. a picture of this because yeah, yeah, you know yeah. there'll be people's jobs is to just look out for stuff like that." Um, they actually sold out of water at WrestleMania as well. So I was fifteen. The only drinks they had left was beer, and I couldn't even have one. Because in America it's twenty one as well. I definitely couldn't get away is with that, it. Is that even legal for him to run out of water? You know what I mean? Like, it was like late it? in the night. True, 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 true. But yeah, just that day, like saw Undertaker jump off the hell in a cell, which is absolutely fucking I mental. Fucking Not bet. Undertaker. Undertaker threw Shane McMahon off actually. Other way around. True. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. You but know, still, someone came way. off hell in a cell. Stone Cold and Shawn Michaels came out. Like it was just as a wrestling fan, that was absolutely perfect got out in the nice Texas heat. And this is like a really weird specific memory of that day, but I think it proves why it's up there for me. When we got back to the hotel, ordered a Domino's, yeah? And I was like, shit, like we didn't get any drinks. And then I opened the fridge in the in the hotel and I forgot I'd put like a big bottle of Dr. Pepper in there. And I just remember like, imagine in Texas how hot it was and I'd been walking about just scrammed and I was like, yo, I just remember having a big gulp of this Dr. Pepper and just that has stuck in my mind. I mean, fair play. It sounds like a good day. I, d- I mean, I don't know if I can <laughs> come up with anything that could even match that. Um, I mean, I definitely could. I, I 100% could come up with something. If, not on the spot. if nothing in my life was as good as that, then I don't know. I as like, good as that gulp of Dr. You know Pepper I mean? on, yeah, a exactly. That's what on a I mean. warm yeah. Texas night. On a cold Texas night, yeah. Um, the best day of my life. Or even just like, what, like it doesn't have to be the 100% No, best. I know that, but I can't even think of a good day. That sounds terrible. Like, out of context. I was like, actually, bad. I went to see Ant-Man on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was pretty <laughs> shit. Um, so I reckon we'll go with something like... Uh, we're getting to the point where it's just best event or best festival. Well, yeah, I mean, I'd say like is... download, download 2014 first... Day on that was good. Well, that's what is really going to be festival. going to see some of your favorite bands and stuff. First time I saw Bon for Soup when I was like 11. That was good. That, 11? That, that made me get fucking, I was like, Whoa, it was big that. that was How did that come about? Day. Um, I think it was I, was, I was a fan from fucking young age. Um, and it was kind of, uh, I think it was a birthday gift perhaps or something. Because also at the same time they were doing a merch like, release kind of thing mm-hmm. and i remember getting a bowling for soup t-shirt perhaps like a signed one maybe or something it was around that time um and i remember just being like ecstatic to actually be able to go and see this band um that i've just like adored for ages and i still i still really like them as a band but i think when i was younger i feel like their music is a lot happier and upbeat and i mean it's got it's got messages that you could listen to now you know as an older person they've got a massive demographic of older fans of like mm. 40 plus in the facebook fan pages i mean you can see like the demographic but i don't know i think over time i kind of fell out of love with them um but they're still one of my favorite bands but back then i was unbelievably upset. like i have a um bowling for soup jacket which is just tattered and torn in my cupboard which i wore for maybe five years straight like wow. it was the it was a black jacket and now it's like kind of red almost because of how much it's worn out you know when it's just like all the cuffs go all shitty and that um but I mean, yeah, we'll go with that. The first but time seeing them. Sure. Yeah. Well, I've not, <laughs> I, I, I genuinely, there's nothing else flying around in my head right now. Yeah, I feel like you're maybe think, like, thinking of it a bit too deeply. Like As I said, for me, it's just like gigs and events and stuff when I've been. And I, I feel like what encapsulates a really good day for me is like when I don't remember anything else from the day. Mm-hmm. Do you know, like more time, even if you like, even when I think of Leeds Fest, like I remember on the last day, I felt like I was going to shit myself half the time. So I wouldn't say like Leeds Fest as a whole. But like, so when you know, when you just think of something and it's all just like one big happy memory, there's no like, oh, well, it was sick, but this. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. I, I feel like that's one well, of the Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say in, in recent memories, then like Download 2014 would be the one where I'd go, yeah, that was good because it was just 
good memories. You know what I mean? Just the whole time. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. Or like, I know Tams have been up to like Scotland or Tam- mm. or when I went to fucking oh god, when I went to Florida. One oh, of those shit, days. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When I went to Florida, probably when I went to like Universal and got oh, like Universal. VIP around there on every ride that we wanted to go on, man. That was fire. So I reckon. Yeah, we'll go with that, actually. Fuck Bowl of the Soup. Fuck down. <laughs> we'll go with Universal. That's what we'll do. Universal yeah. is one of my favourite places well, on, the, on the planet. Simpsons was there. Like, I got I got a Flaming Mo. I got a Duff Beer. I got basically everything oh, in the shit, Simpsons yeah. area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I just went in there. I and thought I you just, meant there was people dressed up walking around just, the Simpsons. Yeah, and, and I was like, like this like, is the best <laughs> shit ever. No, they got that little, they got yeah. a Simpsons ride and a whole Simpsons area with like Most Tavern and uh, Cookie yeah. Martin. I remember what you mean now, but it took that me a was, second. I did go on that. In actually. fact, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to put that. That is, that is guaranteed. Yes, yeah. You see, we you know, got that's there. That's good. We, got, we there. got there. That's good. Yeah, I like that. So let me think. So the cogs turning. Before you die, you want to go back there? Yeah. yeah. Yes. What yeah, do you think happens when you die? I reckon when you die, you go to the uh, Simpsons area of Universal <laughs> Studios. <laughs> no, no, but for real. So, like, do you know out of all the different theories that are out there and the different things that people think happen when you die? So you're asking what happens uh, to you? Mm. What do you experience rather than... No, I'm... Well, yeah, I mean, I'm saying kind of, like, what do you think is, like, the afterlife is the one is... I'm not saying, like, do you decompose... It's, I think, personally, it's it's one that I think everybody's thought about more mm. because, like, not even in deep thought, just occasionally, go, oh, I wonder what happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, personally, it's it's kind of like the big sleep. It's just lights out. Boom. And then it's it's done. You know what I mean? It's just like that, and it's gone. And then there's nothing. It's just, there is, it's hard to conceive, but I think after you close your eyes and it's your time to go, you just... Gone there. Yeah, you know it I is. Mean? Lights out. There's no, I don't see the, it's probably pessimistic of me to say that I don't believe in that afterlife of sorts, but I think if anything, the the energy of you dying is dispersed in some way, but I don't think you experience anything after death. Some people say you have like a mega trip. Some people say like just the chemicals in your brain oh, go you, no, insane. No, one hundred percent. When you die, your brain releases loads of DMT. So yeah, you do. and like a second before you die lasts like fucking hours, mm. and you go on this insane like trip through it, and that's why your life flashes before your eyes before you die, kind of thing. Um, but yeah, in, in general, in in terms of what you then experience after that, uh, whether you're in a suspended state of trip of sorts, or whether you're just blackness or just something, I don't. Yeah, yeah. It's I a think difficult. It's, it's a difficult one to try and like put into words, isn't mm. it? Like what your ideas would be. But what what do you reckon? I think it's really strange because it's very obvious that once you die, you're like your body's done for, isn't it? Like no matter what, within X amount of time, you're just going to be nothing. Like you're just going to get eaten by worms and shit, or burnt if you get cremated or whatever. So there's not going to be any like physical being if you're left. But like, I don't particularly believe this. It's more one that I'd like to believe. I feel like because we're like so smart and there's so much going on in our brain that the like i my brain tells itself there must be something else mm-hmm. like i know that there probably isn't and it'll probably just be I, I i think in reality it's probably what you said it's probably just like darkness but i do like to think that there's just some like even if it is like you said like your brain just kind of relays for a while or something i don't know what it is i in my i just think that there must be like we can sit here and have these conversations and stuff and like I have all these thoughts and so much going on. It's just weird to me that it had all just go poof. Because like in a way, we all like came from nothing through evolution. Mm-hmm. So we just does. Is that it then? Does it just does it just game over when we die? It's weird, isn't well, it? Well, I no, I, yeah, I get what you're saying. I see, I see what you mean. Uh, like it's taken that long for us to get to this point, and I feel like is that do we all just die and then it just restarts? Probably, but I don't like that. Well, it's taken us this long to get. To, when you haven't been alive since you were a fucking atom, have you? I have. Have you? Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> it's been living over and over and over again. Well, I think I think. What do you think of the um, theory of uh, reincarnation of sorts? What do you reckon about that? Nah, I think it's bollocks. We kill way more animals than are born of us. Do you not think that? There's the, definitely more things dying. Do you not here think than, that when if somebody dies and somebody's born at the same or conceived at the same time, energy can pass across? Do you believe in nah. anything like that? No, no. Uh, I just don't, to be honest. <laughs> no, like, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not massively on that front. I just I always think it's interesting to keep an open mind mm. to what people 
think and also to respect people's beliefs because of course you should do that anyway it's yeah, a horrible always. thing not to but i always am intrigued into people's opinions on it me personally i don't buy into any of the energy transfer mm. i don't buy into any of that stuff but i like to learn about it because it's i mean it's interesting to see people's theories on it and i mean it might I mean, I hope that one day somebody could change my mind and give me a bit more hope for something in the afterlife, but I don't see it happening because I'm just staunchly in the way of, it's probably now, you know what I mean? It probably is now. Like, when you really think about it, it's just it's probably just lights out at yeah. the end of the day. And I used to think, I used to have the same mindset of you as it must be something, it can't be nothing. Because as a human trying to conceive nothing, nothing yeah. is almost impossible. So I think... I don't know. It's not very comforting to think. <laughs> it's no, just it's like so. I do fully agree, though, in terms of like I've tried to learn about what other people believe at the same time. Like when I was younger, um, probably like 14, 15, I, used, I went to, because like my brother's pretty religious. I went to, he used to do like this church group thing and he actually kind of persuaded me to go. They were doing like six weeks of like, they do a cinema showing and then I'll go for a meal and talk about like religion and their experiences and how they felt and shit. And my brother was like, yo, if you come for all six weeks for the whole thing, because it was like a, a six part film at the cinema. He was like, I'll buy you food every week. So it was like one week I got a Nando's, one week I got a curry, one week I got a uh, tapas, like whatever was near the cinema, one week I got a five guys. So I was like, yeah, fucking I'm down for that. But then like, I actually found it really interesting that like how much people believe in it. And I actually think religion's quite a comforting thing in some ways. Like, I wish that I could believe in it, but I feel like I'm too far past the point and I'm bent. So there's no way that I could like no, but there isn't. I remember saying it to the guy that, there yeah. at the time. He, I was like, I was like, I, I'm not gonna be, but like say like I'm bisexual. If if I wanted to be accepted into the like Christian church, how would that work? And he was like, Well, you can be bisexual, just don't get with anyone. Or any guys, and I was like, oh. so you can't be bisexual. Yeah, so, well, <laughs> kind of defeats yeah. the point. Mm, not quite bisexual <laughs> yeah. at that point. But it was it was interesting to see like what all those people were saying, and they were one thing that they brought up, which I found really interesting at the time was they were talking about how they believe that God has actually like answered prayers to a certain extent in terms of people's health and well being. They were saying throughout the years like life expectancy and general physical health has got so much better as religion was building which is kind of true like religion has always been getting bigger and bigger mm -hmm. um and like physical health at the same time has always got better and better they ignored the fact of science but we'll, we'll skip that part for now um and they were saying in the last like 10 15 years the number of people like been religious has actually started dropping True. And they've said that they think that they can't unlearn what they've learned about physical health, but you've also started to see a lot more mental health problems come about. And they were saying that's because people aren't praying anymore and asking God for help and stuff like that. And I was like, I can kind of see where you, like, that's a, it's a pretty good analogy, but it's kind of not how it works. I get what you, in a, in a way, like, if we were to, let's say we buy into that theory that it is, you know, it's because people aren't praying. I think if, if it's going to be anything, if you were to realistically think about it, it's going to be based around the fact that it's the mental state being religious gets you in. It gives you the comfort. It gives you everything's okay. Jesus exists. God's going to sort my plans. You don't have to worry about religion dying. doesn't have to be yeah. Jesus. Any religion, anything. Belief in anything really is that kind of comfort that you'll end up bringing yourself. So maybe what, I mean, if, if there was going to be any credence in what he was saying... I would say it was because people don't have that belief in goodness or belief that good will come and you can pray your way out of any situation. And then people's mental health have taken a toll because they haven't got that comforting, mm. you know, backpedal to go, oh, my last phone apart, it's okay, I'll pray, to he'll, he'll sort it all out, it'll be fine. And then you keep moving forwards. So I get it to an extent, but I wouldn't say directly that there's some ethereal being who is now giving everybody mental health issues because we're not praying enough, it seems a bit... Yeah, it's a bit dark if that was the case, isn't it? Yeah, because but I, why, I, why, what, what sort of God would punish people for not praying if he's supposed to be a loving and, mm. like, nice guy? You stop praying, right? You're all going to have fucking depression. <laughs> Come on, yeah, man. Fuck off then. Yeah. And I think another thing that might kind of affect it as well, like, oh, it's, it's obviously a religious thing, but like the Ten Commandments are actually just like decent rules. Mm -hmm. Like it's like don't harm your neighbor and shit like that. Well, if you want to go down that road, uh, that road there's uh, the rules of uh, Satanism, which again are very like normal rules that you'd expect don't don't upset so and so don't do this it, it's a lot more tame than you'd expect it to be the only one 
that is a bit extreme is I think it's something like if a man trespasses, if another person trespasses on your property, ask them to leave. And if they don't destroy them is like the terminology that they use for it. But it's all just general like command, like commandments type things. So it's uh, again, it's just I think all religions have their teachings that are good and can be positive for people. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's a belief of sorts, it seems to bring comfort to people do you know what i've always kind of thought just because you mentioned mentioned certainism and this is a fucking mad thing to say in some ways oh God. but do you think like <laughs> like you are, you obviously see like serial <clears throat> killers and shit that have like got proper into like satanism and praying to the devil and whatever whatever how long do you think you'd have to like really believe in that shit and pray for it until you went fucking mental because i don't believe that it's like satan coming and taking over people's bodies i think that it's people that are probably fucked up anyway want to do that shit and are just like looking for any way to get evil in their life mm -hmm. but i was thinking like them people must be doing that for a long time to actually like go mad and start believing in that shit i think i think if you actually look into like the the core because I, I did it a while ago like i don't know when i was in my teenage years you know when you're just looking up everything ufos satanism fucking everything demon rituals oh the world leaders are all having rituals together at this place i saw something the other day which said when i first heard about the illuminati i actually thought it'd be an everyday life problem and yeah, it's true like i thought it'd just be affecting everything yeah and, and like, it'd be popping up everywhere eyes everywhere yeah. everyone doing this everywhere jersey just uh, appearing <laughs> yeah, always oh, here again no always oh, beyonce now um no i think um the what was the point i was making was Something a, about religion and the devil and people going mad. Satanism, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the teachings of that in itself is something I looked into when I was like in teenage years. And it's it's not, you know, it's not it's not really about worshiping the devil. It's more just about I think it's it's to do with like self. It's to do more with yourself to kind of like make yourself better and mm. to be a bit selfish about stuff, which is why it's seen as a bit evil and such. But I don't know if there's like another sect of satanism that's like devil worshipping i don't know if you could if they actually separate the two because you know how sometimes people say they are a thing and it's like well no you might say you're that thing but what you're doing is not what that thing is i think it might be something like that so i don't don't quote me on it but i feel like there's different levels to it and the people that like you're saying the people that want to be evil and want to try and find a way. Yeah, and they want to they want to introduce demons into their life, and they want to channel the energy of Satan himself and all that shit. They're gonna, like it would actually be pretty lit though. It, I think it'd be, I think it'd be fucking insane <laughs> to be in a room with somebody doing one of these worships, and I would, and I, I can't say that I wouldn't be fucking terrified that no, something was going to happen. That's you'd what I mean. Be, Imagine think, if you were there and someone was like, "What are them? What are them star things?" Called? Yeah, the pentagram. Uh, on like the floor. if they had a pentagram on the floor and they had like candles, candles lit and out. shit, I'd be like, "Don't know about this diddy one." Diddy yeah, diddy like, diddy. Chatting some mad tongue the language, big fucking thing, and then they start floating. <laughs> oh fuck! Yes, yeah, it's game over. I don't believe in religion, but that shit had fucked me up. Right? It's the same. It's the same. The way that I uh, this came up recently, actually. Um, I um I don't believe in any of these like ethereal or these like kind of otherworldly beings and such but mm. will i ever fuck with them no i won't will i ever do a ouija board no i won't will i ever do some kind of weird satanic worship as a joke no i fucking no way i'm not gonna if i can i don't have to do it so why would i even test it i feel like i would you would yeah i have done a ouija board when i was younger. i know you have and you've been fucking harassed by ghosts for the rest of your nah, life the ghost only said hello once and that was before the ouija did board. they say goodbye no, but it was actually really weird, you know. When if I they didn't say goodbye, they're still connected. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> nah, but when I did it, it actually, it, it said that, like, it was me and my cousin who to this day says she didn't do it, but she probably did. Yeah, but she's like, it's been like 12 years now. Why would you not admit it at this point? Um, but the, the, the thing that came through, apparently, on the Ouija board said their initials, and it was my uncle who killed himself's initials, but like my cousin wouldn't have even thought of that. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was like, you were nice spirit. Yeah. Like you this, yeah. And it kind of linked up, but I can't remember exactly what the answers there were now. I was like 12, but it was actually, I, I, it was part of the reason I didn't stay here for many years going back to the ghost hunter episode. Oh yeah. A few it, years it, ago. Well, I mean, this whole topic's been quite yeah, close been to pretty, that. <laughs> yeah, we, we've touched on it. So, um, I think as a whole, uh, Ouija boards and, you know, anything occult tea, I'll just stay away from. Witchcraft as well, you can fuck off with that. I don't want anything to do with it. Just don't, just don't do it. 
do it yourself. That's fine. I don't care what people do at home. I don't care what people do. I couldn't care less. Just please don't involve me. Wait till we go on that ghost hunt in September. No, that's what I mean. I have to do this yeah, shit. You, you I know wait. I do, and I don't want to do that <laughs> shit, but I'm going to have to do that shit. Oh. And I swear to God, if she comes up with some, that past life regressions woman, if she comes to me and says, you were a little child. Or like, you were a Roman emperor or some shit like that. I will just... She's oh. going to gonna come up to you and go, little Tim, but kind of Tim. <laughs> yeah, in it? Yeah, it's like, oh my God, she knows. He's bozo, he's back. She's been listening to the poddy. <laughs> yeah, number one fan. So it might be not worshipping Satan in a few years, but in life, is there anything you really regret? <laughs> I'm wondering what the fuck you were getting to then. It might not... What? I might not regret worshipping no, Satan No, I was saying you might, it might be not regretting... Not wor- you fucked me up now. <laughs> you said it. So <laughs> no, 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 fucking, no, hang on. No, it might... You, your biggest regret might be not worshipping Satan in a few years. But what is it now? When you think about that... That's the it worst worked, sentence. Nah, it actually worked the first time. I, <laughs> I said don't know it, if it did. I said it correctly. Anyway, um... Yeah, my biggest regret is not getting into Satanism. <laughs> <laughs> you fucker. Um, I don't. I don't really know. You know. I know. I got me toast up oh, on the chair. Right. Um, in terms of regrets, biggest regrets. I mean, a big one, a big regret. I was down at um, Insomnia Gaming Festival in Birmingham, and it was around the time I didn't have too much money, didn't have a very well-paying job, um, and you know, I couldn't afford to get long trains just on a whim and stuff like that, and. Um, I was down in Birmingham and my mate messaged me and it was on the Sunday of Leeds Fest and he was like, I've got a spare ticket if you want to come to Leeds Fest kind of thing. I wasn't even supposed to be in Birmingham that weekend. I didn't have tickets to go to Insomnia, but I was just hanging around there and just like seeing everybody that was there. So it was even more annoying the fact that I didn't have to be in Birmingham and who was playing who was playing at Leeds Fest that day when I got... Eminem. Eminem was playing Leeds Fest. The only fucking time in me being a fan of Eminem that he's been in the UK. The only time. And I got offered to come and see him and to, to be a big fan of Eminem. And I got offered to come and see him and then you didn't. just never got a what chance. What year was that? Like 2016? 16, 16 17. 17. I yeah. was there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, were you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see him? I did, yeah. It was great. How come you never told me that? You just don't want to upset me. I have. Oh, you probably have. I will. It probably, will it probably come up, but every time you tell me, it really upsets me. So don't tell me again. Stop telling <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, you should have gone to that. Like you right. should have just I spent know. every penny you I had. I know, to but go. the thing is, uh, when when I actually came back up to uh, where I was living at the time, which was probably about two hours on the train, um, didn't buy a ticket because I didn't have any money. We had to jump it, and the fucking ticket guy come round anyway. I had to pay full extra full price for two tickets, and it was like 140 pounds or something to go two hours on the train for two people. You see, you actually played yourself properly. Majorly. Played myself. Man. I can see why that's a big regret, and it's kind of similar to mine actually. I mean, slightly different, but I had the opportunity to see one of my favorite artists, Linkin Park, when I was younger, and literally my choice was in my head it was when i just had an apprenticeship so similar i didn't really have any money i was on like three quid an hour or something yeah it's fucking it's, it's atrocious isn't it's it mad isn't it uh-huh. i was doing good work and on like three quid an hour anyway thinking power playing in sheffield and i was like right do i get tickets in the train or do i get a quarter of weed and i got a quarter of weed what a fucking dumb decision what an idiot. and that was their last ever time in the uk that tour the, the uh, rest in peace to the homie chester who killed himself well, i had somebody who went to see him like two shows before that happened kind of thing so it's it's crazy like that it was so instantaneous kind of thing but yeah. what a pain that is though you had a chance to go and see him i know i can't believe i didn't do it like now i would never do something like that now i go to gigs that i shouldn't even yeah, go you to you haven't got the money to fucking yeah. you like fuck it i'm getting I'm tickets like, like like i've always said now ever since i missed m then no matter the price, no matter where in the UK, maybe even close, maybe even in mainland Europe, just a bit, you know, yeah, just a bit, just a bit, bit. yeah, a little, little couple hour flight, whatever, I'd do that. Um, any price, you name go. your price, I'd fucking go. That's it what you should do mm-hmm. if it's one of your favorite artists. Like, I feel like I've done quite well seeing my favorite artists this year. There's one on my list that I've not seen that I really want to see in the next like 12 month cycle when they're on this album. It's Turnstile, true. I proper, I proper want to see them. Have you ever seen? Seen him? Have you ever seen the big man? Big Yeezy. Oh, nah, but I feel like... At this point, I don't know if he's ever going to tour again. He's not toured in years. Although, similar to the Linkin Park one, around the same time, and I'd fucking pay so much for this now, fucking Kanye and Jay-Z did a joint tour. Imagine how fucking... Was that, that been for the... Uh, watch, watch the, the throne. throne? Imagine how good that would have been. Did you see when they were in Paris? Oh, and they played the song 16 times yeah. in a row. <laughs> 
No, I wouldn't have actually been happy with that. No. Did <laughs> when it kicks back in, ball so hard, you'd be like, no, not again. Did they refund the people? I don't think so. Why Surely they? they did. You can't just play a gig and play the same song. I think if you're in around. Paris and you've just released that song and it's come a massive banger, I think you're allowed to do that. No, I don't. That's not on. I think, to be fair... Imagine the, if like, if I saw that and I went all the way to Paris because I'm a big fan get, and, and they just play the same song 16 times. I just go and get a around. pint, really. A couple of pints. Just stand at the side listening to it. What's bum this bum. one? Oh, it's bum the same bum. one again. Yeah. Bum bum. All you have to bum hear bum. is the... And you'd be like, right, I'm off. I'm not doing this now. Was that you were sending me voice notes listening to that the other day in the club? Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the the metal version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. I can't remember what cover it was. But speaking of Lincoln Park, um, Hybrid Theory 2014 download that I was talking about earlier. Uh, in they full. Did Hybrid Theory in full, bro. In full. It was amazing. It was just the time when they'd released the Hunting Party album. So like uh, Guilty of the Same and all those were just thrown in there. And at the time, I didn't know those songs. And I went back on my Facebook not long ago and looked through my old videos and there was a video of uh, Chester running across the stage singing Guilty the Same, and I know it now. And like watching that video back, I'm like, oh, that's sick. I do actually like that song. Because obviously it's un- well, it's just released, so you don't have it fully in your brain yet. Yeah. So it was just really cool to see him. Again. That's banging. Yeah. That's like when I talk about seeing Eminem, the feeling that I yeah. got then. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I just, I just felt was. like, you, you know, because you did that to me, I felt like I got to throw one back your way. It's actually not on that. <laughs> yeah. But speaking of festivals, mm. we've recently had the full Leeds Fest lineup has we been have. released. Well, oh. not full. They're still saying they've got like a few people to add, right? I mean, they better add some good people. I'm telling you that much. I mean, do you know what? I feel like you have a much more negative reaction to this than me, but only because I really like indie rock. And also because I'm in big boomer territory these days, man. True, you are pretty old now. It's when, um, it's when, it's, it's when the AI generated looking rappers come into it. Yeah, I mean... When it's just names at this point, they're just throwing words on the... What's with the font, by the way? Did you notice that? No, it looks similar to what... It's always just the No, the weird... Font. No, the... Like, the oh, shirt's done broco, and it's... Why they? Why have they done yeah, that? Yeah, they're a bit weirdly shrunk, aren't they? Like, look at these... Like, at, you mean at Six and Sea yeah, Girls? Yeah, no, I know what you mean now. I they're, like, different that. sizes, aren't they? No idea why they've done that. But anyway, <laughs> we're, we're looking at the first day of Leeds Fest here. And to be fair, one thing that I was... They've just announced pretty much all the smaller artists mm-hmm. that you would want to see, including, mm-hmm. like, filling out the main stages a little bit. But I really expected from this announcement and was hoping for some more, like, main stage names, like, bigger names, because... There is like sub headliners on here, but I think some of them I I don't know if they're at the level of sub headlining, and it I don't know I feel like there's no cohesion in this lineup at all. It it, it kind of blags my my head a little bit. Like in the in the previous years, it's clear that they've gone for the younger demographic, and mm. it's it's been very clear what they've been trying to do with this lineup. It's just it's like it's a mixture of sixteen year old TikTok music and thirty year old. Like uh, which eight, is fine because yeah. I'm kind of in between that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's perfect for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, I don't know, it, it's it's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah, like, obviously you've got the headliners. We've kind of gone over these before, but like Billie Eilish and Imagine Dragons. Billie Eilish is defo big enough. Imagine Dragons don't do anything for anyone that I know of. So fuck them. But then like the sub-headliners, Steve Lacey, he's a big name. I get why he's there. Declan McKenna, I get. I don't know who Lil TJ is. Like, I actually don't know who... I, like, I, I'm not even just trying to take the piss. I don't know who half the people are, to be honest But then, it. like, Becky Hill. Becky Hill's a pretty big name. I know Becky name. Hill. Yeah, she's a pretty yeah. big name, but I don't think she's second on the main stage big name yet. No, I know what you mean. It's... I, I think it's... I think they're trying to push artists, potentially. Yeah. And, I mean, I haven't got an issue with them trying to do something a bit different, perhaps. Maybe they're trying to get more of, like, a female-led, like... Line up, but they can't put them too high up because they couldn't have Becky Hill headlining. Mm. So maybe they're just giving them a chance to do that. Yeah, but or maybe, again, maybe we're just not aware of the size of her fan base and it could be much bigger than we expect. I think that what they've done at this Leeds Fest is just go for the easiest options. Mm-hmm. Well, the fact that Don Broco, uh, before, I, I, again, I don't know who Lil TJ is, but. Something in my head says he's not bigger than... No, I mean, the thing is, though, I think that what they've done is they've looked at how many monthly Spotify listeners people have and they've gone, yeah, they will they can go there, that's fine. But, like, a lot of these people, like, Steve Lacey's massive and a lot, a lot of his music is really good. I'm not saying he's a bad artist. But the problem is he's only got so many monthly listeners because he had one song that massively blew up on Tok Tok. It was that, I think I knew... I think I knew. Oh, yeah. 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 So everyone knows that. That's why he's got so many. And it's the same with Becky Hill. Like, I don't think that there's like 
she's got like an album of songs that everyone rates. Everyone will just know one or two. Yeah, whereas whereas artists that might have less monthly listeners might have a back catalogue of mm. like 20 great, uh, maybe not 20 albums, but they'll have a back catalogue, maybe two or three albums that mm. you could say to any fan, oh, this artist is performing here. And they'd be like, yeah, of course I'm going to go see them. But they might not be listening to them every day. So they might not be on the Spotify yeah. playlist kind of thing. Exactly. And I also think that, I don't know. I just think they spent all the money on Billie Eilish, to be honest. The, yeah, yeah, it does. It like does it, feel like even that. Just it does. The he- the, the even just with the rest of the head. Because the Even the killers and Sam Fender, it's like, it just feels like they've gone. Mm, yeah. I actually, I think that the biggest, like, I personally think the biggest ones on there are Billie Eilish and the killers. Like, I get why the killers are there. They, them two are the ones for me where I go 100% Leeds Festival headliners. But do you not think money wise, Billie Eilish over the killers? Oh yeah, Billy, I definitely that's what cost I'm saying. more. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how I'm saying. Yeah, and I reckon they got Fender for pretty cheap, mm-hmm. and Falls for. Pre- I love Falls. They were li- I'm absolutely buzzing to see them. They're one of my favorite bands in the world. Mm-hmm. They didn't even sell out Millennium Square in Leeds last year. Yeah, it's yeah, like seven thousand yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, what they, yeah. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah, it just don't make why sense. are they that high up? Yeah, like Lewis Capaldi has loads of fans. I get why he's there, but it's just a weird vibe. Central C, that one song, right? Oh, can I be homophobic? Oh, he's had a few of them now, though. Has he? Has yeah, he? he's had a few right, viral okay, ones. Okay, fair. Like, I, get, like I say, I'm boomer and you I get so. why he's big. Same time, I remember sending him a, a thing to my mate earlier this year. He was doing an album launch at the wardrobe in Leeds. Didn't even sell out. That's the thing, like... if No, but this is what I'm saying. They've gone for the easy options. A lot of the younger people at Leeds Fest that just get a ticket no matter what, will go see Central C and sing along to those two songs and love it. I think that it's going to work. Like, every, those same people will go sing the few Sam Fender songs, will go see the same Imagine Dragons songs, Becky Hill, Steve Lynch. Imagine it's all the same dragons. Thing. Oh, why? How, who's keeping them relevant? Who is listening to their fucking music anymore? I do it was, it was big 2012 energy. Fuck them off now. I'm fed up hearing about Imagine Fucking Dragons. Only time I hear about Imagine Dragons is when someone says Imagine Dragon D's nuts. I across was going to fucking go. God damn it, man. I was I was gonna get there somehow. <laughs> um yeah, so I think on the on the on the Friday, uh well, whatever day, the first day, um, you know, you got artists like Andy C and Shy FX and stuff. Yeah, there every year pretty stage, much. But they're there every year. It's just D- DJs is the easy one. DJs is come on. This is one thing I actually have fully noticed about this lineup, right? Mm. So I was at Leeds Fest last year. I'm buzzing. Bakar's on here, yeah. I gave Bakar an honourable mention for my album of the year in a video we did a few months back. He was there last year. I saw him at Leeds Fest last year. Um, Andy C wasn't, but I know somewhere on one of these DJ stages is Head X. I seen him at Leeds Fest last year. Mm-hmm. He was there last year. Mm-hmm. It's like, come on. Like, it's like yeah, at least switch it up at a little least, bit. At least let yeah. him miss a fucking year out. The thing that the thing that gets me is that this year, I mean for the past couple of years actually, is there is almost next to no heavier acts at all. Like there's no mm. there's not they're not even they're not even pretending to pander to that audience anymore. Like in the past they might have said, Yeah, hey, you can have Shikari, hey, yeah, you can have this, you can have that. But now it's like there is nobody really heavier than Don Broco. You know I actually, I, mean? I thought that right, and then I listened to some of the music on this stage, and Knock Loose are well fucking. Oh, Knock Loose are heavy, yeah. I <laughs> and didn't then see them. Meet there. me at the, meet, meet the a, a little it, bit as, as well. Heavy. Magnolia Park as well. There's a few lower ones. There is, and Palais Royale, and like they're they're all right. And I d- I didn't even see this area here. Actually. Yeah, there's yeah, some, that, that's there's so some so all right that, stuff yeah. in there, but more so is your bigger, heavier bands. There's no, but like I'm no. saying, and in terms of the lineup, Don Broker is the highest up heavy band, that, and they're not even heavy. They've just got some old school British emo punky bands, Don Broco, You, Me at Six, and then brought in a few American heavier ones, and mm-hmm. that's it. They've just mm-hmm. gone, yeah, cool. Like, that's and like in comparison to somebody that, like you were saying, who was it that didn't sell out um, wardrobe? No, Central, Central C. C. At least when I looked, it, yeah. it hadn't sold yeah, out maybe quickly. at that point. Yeah, 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 like instantly. For example, All Time Low playing Brudenell in Leeds. Um, yeah. Straight, and that was just an album. Uh, it was it was a warm up. It wasn't even it wasn't even advertised properly. It was like twelve pounds a ticket or something, mm. and that was instantaneous. And you know, like it's straight away. I get it. I get it because they're trying to they're trying to appeal. Yeah, I just feel like it's not generation. for us. It's not for us anymore. It's so sad to see because it used to be. It's insane what it's gone from to. The only thing is, like, I feel like it's weird. This lineup is so strange, man. The way they've done this is just—it just, makes sense. Come it's unruly. It, it just—it fucking blags me because some of it is so clearly for people of our age. Yeah, some of it is just like, what the fuck is going on? Slick like, token are there? Who are they? 
That's uh, it's a band that's uh, blown up. On they're basically a masked band, and nobody knows who they are. Uh. People are saying it's a super group of other bands, and but they just don't release who they are. And it, I think they've blown up on like TikTok, maybe. I've seen them all over my Twitter. My mates are all listening to them. I don't rate them personally, but that is but a heavier big. band, so it's so good they're, to they're see definitely them. on with the trends. <laughs> and yeah. like, what well, I was for them saying, to be that low is surprising because they're like they're really blowing up. Like, mm. so yeah, I mean, to be fair, they're second highest on that stage, so they'll be sub headline. It's like un- just underneath the headliner of that stage. But like this new lineup announcement for me is is weird because there's actually quite a lot of people that I like. Like, let me just name like a few of the ones that got added. Like, I love Bacar. The Amazons are pretty decent. They were already there. Hot Milk are pretty decent. Like, I don't mind Shy FX and stuff. Like, you know, you'll go see them after after a, a good day at Leeds Fest. Don't mind Headex. Sub Focus are pretty good. Seagulls. Like, there's actually loads. You've got Kenny Hoopla down here, who I fucking love. Uh, Easy Life are banging. I have no... Like, for the smaller artists, they've actually padded it out really well for me. My only issue is, I feel like there's not enough mid-level artists. They're mm-hmm. either pretty small academies or not even academies or like or oh, they've popped massive. off and had huge yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But they've either had huge success in the past or they popped off recently and are now huge because exactly. of recent success there's yeah. not any like mid-level shit at mm-hmm. all for him well you know what's interesting the reason why they've got these artists so down like kenny hoopla and such on these low down stages is because they're obviously not they want there to be artists there for that demographic mm-hmm. but they don't want to put people off by having them higher so when people read these posters, they don't go, oh, fuck Sleep Token's that. Sleep Token, two million monthly listeners. Mad, really? And they're down there in little tiny writing. True. You know what I mean? Like It's just interesting to see their mindset and how they've done it. And I get, I completely understand stage breaks and I understand genres on certain stages mm. and I get it. It just, I don't know. It's yeah. in the same as you where it's like, it just doesn't feel It's a right. weird lineup, mm. isn't it? It is certainly a weird one. I don't. I am looking forward to it. Like I know I love the Leeds Fest weekend. I always do. Mm-hmm. But everything. I mean, it's always it's always a decent. It's, one. it's more. Just I, I personally don't think I'll be going. So no, I'm not surprised that you're not. To be fair, mm-hmm. like I'm it's, actually, it's download Sunday for me and Slam Dunk this year. Do you know what I, I realized earlier, which I'm really upset about? In fact, I realized it yesterday. Me and my brother went to buy Slam Dunk tickets, and Slam Dunk is on the same day as the last Leeds game of the season, which is at home against Tottenham. How packed is Leeds going to be? It's going to be mad. What the fuck? But more the worry is, it's looking like that. Like I can't buy a slam dunk ticket now. Like, I don't. I, I'll miss Leeds versus Tottenham for a for a festival. But it's more the point of that game might be a game that means Leeds go up or go down. Like mm-hmm. it might be a case of if we win that, we stay up. So I can't miss that. So I've got to wait until closer to the time to find out if it's important or not to see whether I can buy a slam dunk ticket. Well, but imagine this is the this is the mad part. It's live at Leeds Festival the day before. It's slam dunk that day. Imagine if that game is important and Leeds win to stay up, mate. It's gonna be hectic. It's gonna be fucking pandemonium. If it'd be even worse if Le- if uh, slam dunk was still in like, oh, yeah, Millennium Square, nice. it'd just be it'd be game over. The yeah. police would just have to give up. They just say, "Go on, just do it. Be amongst yourselves for four hours, and then we'll come in and clear." But I can out just all imagine the like all the Leeds fans in town getting absolutely wrecked, right? and there's like twelve k people coming back from Tw- slam dunk from fucking Temple, Temple Newsom, getting round, dropped off in town, round fucking corner. How how the fuck are people gonna get home? How are they gonna get taxis? How are they gonna get? E- I didn't even consider that. That's fucking nuts. It's gonna be mad. Even reg- no matter what the result is, it's gonna be fucking carnage. There's no, I think if so we got people. if we got if we were relegated, or if we're already relegated, or already safe by that point, which I'm hoping it doesn't come down to the last game like last year, then it won't. It'd be fine. True. If we go down, yeah. people will just go home depressed. They're yeah. not gonna go get wrecked. Yes, yeah, true. If yeah, we, yeah. If it, it's like if we need to win and we somehow beat Tottenham to stay up, mm-hmm. then it'd be yeah. Mental. If it's like an insane scoreline as well, like three 0 or something yeah. fucking crazy, <laughs> there'd be limbs it'd be both mad. at Slam Dunk and everywhere. everywhere. Fucking the Leeds else. fans yeah. would be. Yeah. Red in slam dunk dancing around <laughs> to the offspring. Wouldn't blame them. Wouldn't yeah, blame them. Fucking wouldn't. fantastic. I, I would be. Band. I'd be there with them. Well, why don't you get a ticket for slam dunk before they sell out, and then sell your ticket if you can't? Because I don't think it'll sell out, will it? Maybe it's not sold out for like five years. Is it not? No. Nah. Oh, true. Well, then you find it. Yeah. I mean, it's on the final release, but they always just do that so that. I mean, this lineup. Money. This lineup is my favorite lineup in. Oh, I've read it. Donkeys years. Like honestly, every every act on there, I've gone. 
Yes. I think especially for the smaller acts, it's banging. Yeah. Like, yeah, proper really. good. I mean, even mm. the big acts is banging. Like, you yeah. got fucking... I mean, Shikari's everywhere, but they're still good to see. But having the Offspring, that was a big peg for him to get, like... Oh, yeah, Offspring are a massive name. And it's not like they've, like, squandered on the other stages either. There's, like, yeah. still good names on the other stages. Yeah, yeah. I'm buzzing with that slam dunk lineup. What did you think of the boxing the other night? What boxing? Uh, Jake Paul was there, was there a match yeah. was, it, was it a boxing match a boxing match I thought it was a hugging match mm-hmm. shit my bad fucking hell no it was lacklustre is what I will say I mean yeah there was blood but I, it didn't seem like there should have been by the fucking punches they were throwing and what they were landing and how much fucking hugging there was it was, it was annoying and then and then at the end um, I mean I had said beforehand that I said it was going to go all the way and then it was going to go to Jake the fact that it didn't go to Jake made me happy um, but it's it's in the same regard. I'd love to see Jake's ego get stood on a little bit, but at the same time, could you imagine how pissed off the Furies would have been if Jake... Like, that's what I would have wanted to see more. Yeah. Because, yeah, fucking Jake Paul, he fucks up all the time. He comes out smelling of roses, doesn't matter. The Furies would have got into fucking meltdown. That would have been, been great. I would have loved to see that. Big John would have had his top off in the yeah, ring. Going he would have got in the ring. I reckon Once, he'd have offered to fight Jake I'd, next. Then and there, he would have yeah. climbed in the ring and fucking squared up to him as he was giving his like speech, Like I reckon. oh, And then there was the bit of uh, disrespect from Logan, which I wasn't too yeah. happy with throwing out fucking shade mid-match. I suppose, though, you got to back your brother. I guess so. And yeah, Love you, bro. Yeah, I love you too. <laughs> I noticed that at the time, oh, and I was like... God. Cringe. Yeah. I kind of thought maybe you just did it on purpose as a bit of sarcasm, but mm-hmm. clearly not. Yeah, if you watch it back, yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah I love you When too. I've really seen it, I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, as if he's saying that to you, little bro. What do you reckon? I what, thought, did you, what did you think? To be honest, I thought it just looked like two low-level boxers having a boxing match. It, it did not look like it was a professional I feel like because it was a professional boxer, it didn't allow Jake to look special in any way. Well, not professional. Like, Tommy's only had eight fights, and the combined record of those people is, like, two wins and 100 losses or something. Mm-hmm. So what do you expect? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. It, it is literally what people should have thought was going to happen. But you just never think it, especially because of all Jake's fights being so exciting and he's got that knockout at, at any moment. He just never really even got close, did it? No, he was a bit, like I say, lacklustre is what I'll he say. He looked nervous he when did. he was coming out he as did. well. Did you, did you see the, it was really weird that the cameras were waiting to go into his changing room. And I know that they do that before matches to just see what they're doing and all that. But there was a really weird walk up that Jake did on his own. And they kept the camera on and him. He looked like and he, he was were. like... It's like he didn't know where the fuck he was. It looked like fucking Biden when he comes off mm. that helicopter. It, it just genuinely looked like he didn't know where he was going. And then it cut away to the stadium view and then back to him stood facing the wall and he turns around and looks all confident. It was like, were you Maybe supposed to air that in. bit? That was his nervous moment like, before. Yeah, yeah, was he supposed, were they supposed to air it? Did they mean, I mean to fucking keep it live? They were waiting outside his room to follow him, so that's, you would think so. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. But he just looked, it was weird. He looked like shook. It looks like behind the scenes footage that you weren't supposed to see. I like if he'd like, have won it, it'd have come oh, I was so nervous in this moment. <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, or when he said uh, before the match, he's like, I'm 100% fine, I've got no injuries. And as soon as he loses, ah, oh, my arm, I hit my leg. Oh, my arm, I've been oh, ill in this camp. Oh, no. Yeah, in it, and it's, come on, come on. Yeah, to be fair though, like it was that close that if there was a rematch, I wouldn't say that I think Tommy's particularly going to win. It no. wasn't convincing. If anything, him. I think if there's a rematch, I would say Jake would win purely based on the fact that he won't want to lose again. Well, I mean, well, I mean, you wouldn't want to yeah. lose anyway. But, yeah. but, but I feel like he would put even more fucking effort into yeah, true. it and just become a beast. And I feel Maybe. like I've, we, we didn't even really get to see if Tommy could take a punch. No. Like Jake <laughs> never got near him, no. but then would the same just happen again? And did you see the fucking video that Molly, Molly May, uh, yeah. did you see what she posted? Just where they were cheering. No, no, no. When, when, he, when he come back home, he's like, my champion. And he walks through the door and he's got the belt over his shoulder and the backpack. And it's like really perfectly angled with all this like balloons at the side and all this shit. And everyone's like, no fucking way is that man just come all the way back from Saudi Arabia after and winning a fucking... Ba- and all he's got is a backpack and a belt. No, I fucking come off it. He's come home and she's gone, come on, let's film this. He's like, I've just, I'm tired. He's I like, go, go outside, bed, Molly. come back in. Come on, let's film it. Oh, fuck me. The, it just... Uh, yeah I saw that it, I did see that the fact that it's I mean the majority of it is obviously played up for social media and I get it because you they're both it. he's not so much a social media figure but his wife is um, I mean he is as well he went on Love Island true yeah I guess so I guess so that's why people yeah. care about him boxing because he's got fame from Love Island true yeah so and I them suppose two met on there didn't they did they I think so is that what it was yeah oh true I think so the thing is when it comes to Love Island bro I'm fucking gone on no that. I don't really know but in my head I feel like that is how them two because she owns Pretty little thing, right? And all the slaves. She's like the, she's like the creative <laughs> director or something. True. Yeah. 
She was the runner-up in the fifth series of reality dating show Love Island, where she met Tommy Fury. Well, there you go. There, there you go. go. So okay they just they, they started as a celebrity couple. I mean, fair enough. I mean, yeah, it makes sense that they're doing that kind of stuff then, but it just seems a bit about face, you know, like he's come back home and she's like, come on, let's it do is, it. It was nearly as embarrassing as Big John Fury trying to say <laughs> oh. that fucking Jake should give him all the money. Right, what the fuck's that? You've made, you've made, you've made a good, you've made a deal here in front of sixty million people. We've all heard it. Come he on, said, man. I know said, you're a good he said, lad. I'm a, he said, "I'm a gypsy. I can't I read can't all right. That's why I didn't sign the contract." Yeah. Come on, mate. Fuck off, man. You don't got lawyers or anything. <laughs> like you're oh, full yeah. of shit, bro. We, we said it in front of sixty million people paying to watch my son fight, but we couldn't get contracts sorted out. Sorry. Right, in it, yeah, what the fuck, the, the biggest fight potentially that he's going to have in his life. To yeah. be fair, oh, no. I actually find John Fury proper entertaining. Like, I think he's a character, but he just chats some. I actually think that he makes, like, especially Tommy, like, way more nervous for fights. Like, I don't think it'll affect Tyson at this point, but I don't think that he helped being over there in the camp and pretending like he was going to make those deals and shouting at people and stuff all the time. Surely that ain't going to help. No, and, I mean, and getting in his head about, like, if you don't win, you can't come home and yeah. shit like that. It's so like, you're going to change your name. It reminds me of, like, do you know when you, like, been at the family do on Christmas all day and there's that one uncle that's proper wrecked and he just starts being a knobhead? That's what John Fury's like 24 <laughs> 7. All the time. Yeah, in it. That's just him. That's his personality. All the time. Drunk uncle energy. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I am looking forward to seeing, like, if, if there is a rematch, I'll see it. Logan Paul said on Jake's podcast yesterday as well that if them two don't put a rematch together, Logan wants to fight Tommy. So that'd be entertaining if we beat both brothers. <laughs> yeah, it would be very entertaining. Although I prefer Lo- Logan to Jake. I wouldn't back him to lose. I'd probably no, I rather think, he win. I think I'd, I could see Logan winning that one, yeah, to be fair. Yeah, I could. Seems like a bigger guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but any Fort Floyd Mayweather in lasted all however many rounds and actually landed a punch. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, unlike some. you got to respect that. But <laughs> yeah. I say we, we call it there for today. I've yep. got to go swim some fucking lengths. Ooh, man's going swimming. See if I drown after yeah. that final oh, destination God, yeah. comment yeah. earlier. If you see a penny on well, the pool. if you don't hear from me next week, there was a penny in the pool, but hopefully you do. Till next Fingers time. Fingers crossed. See you later.